You loving me, I loving you. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life. We won't live in the past. We're making it last. Mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, friends for life. Why do we hurt the ones we should not hurt at all? Hmm. That's what we're going to be unpacking on this episode of Making It Last. Welcome. I'm Noreen Dele, you know, it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, with other people. And I'm going to unpack that this time around with Ed Snyder. He's an author. He is a motivational coach, trainer, a pastor. Welcome. Thank you, Miss Noreen. It's good to be with you. Why do we hurt the ones we should not hurt at all? Uh, Why? Yeah, that's a great, great question, because in, in our you know, in our thought, we're thinking, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be going after those people with our negative emotions or i.e. anger. You know, we love them. They're our spouse, our mother, our father, our brother, our sister, whoever, you know, that's the person naturally we would think to stay away from. But at, in, act, in reality, they become a lightning rod for our negative behavior. Okay. And, and here's why out there in the world, on our jobs, uh, wherever, we know the perimeters, you know, in, in our job. If we have a fit of negative emotion, we're going to get wrote up, possibly even fired from our job, and there goes our income. We're back to square one. So that's going to kind of somewhat keep us in check as long as we're dealing with a mild case of negative emotions. And I say that because sometimes we're trying to push down into the pressure cooker of a bad case of negative emotions. And then you've got a, you've got a shooting somewhere if it's not dealt with, that's extreme. So we know that we know that we're going to be in serious trouble. If we act up on the job, uh, if we're at the grocery store or, at, you know, at the shopping mall or wherever, and we act up, well, it's not going to look good. Somebody might call security or even the police. So we're going to pretty much keep ourselves in check. But when we come home and we have those people around us, mm. they become a lightning rod in the fact that they'll, we know they love us and they'll always be there for us. Okay. So unfortunately, we always hurt the ones we shouldn't hurt at all because we're comfortable with them. Mm. We know they love us. We know that they're not going anywhere. Well, don't count on that because a person can only put up so long with negative behavior, negative conversations, yelling, screaming, and even throwing things. They're going to get out. One, they fear for their life at, at some degree. Two, I'm done. I deserve yeah. better. Yeah. You know, um, in, in the opening uh, of your of your podcast, I shared a little bit of why we wrote Control, uh, Control the Beast, A Guide to Manage Your Emotions, because it's my story. Uh, I mentioned how that we had our first marital discussion, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and it blew up. Well, there were there were triggers in in my uncontrolled anger. One. If somebody slammed the door, you know, hung up on me, that infuriated me. Or if I'm talking to you and you walk away, or even you walk away and shut the door in my face, kaboom, it's going to be a mushroom cloud in the sky. Well, God has a sense of humor. I'm, I'm of a German descent. My wife is of Irish descent. And so you've got a hard-headed German and a hot-blooded Irish woman living together, <laughs> married. And so in that discussion, not only did she walk away from me, she slammed the door in my face. And not oh. only did she slam the door in my face, she locked it. And I just went into an uncontrolled rage, put my fist through the door. Now, for record, I have never, ever laid a hand on my wife. Never. My father brought me up better than that. However, it scared her. And uh, the next morning, we're sitting at breakfast and she's like, I don't know if I can do this. And I'm like, 
do what? What are you what are you talking about? Last night, well, to an angry person, to somebody that deals with negative emotions, that's water under the bridge. That was last night. You know, we're we're trying to deal with right now. But she was still feeling the impact of my uncontrolled anger. Mm -hmm. And already, not even a couple of months into our brand new marriage, she's thinking about leaving because she's scared. So, yes, I hurt the one I shouldn't hurt at all. And yes, subconsciously, I thought she'll be okay. It'll be all right. She loves me. She's, you know, there's no doubt in my mind how much she loves me and I love her. I mean, she's my first love. The day I met her, I told my best friend, Burt McGavitt, I said, when she walked away, I said, that's her. And he's like, that's who? I said, that's the girl I'm going to marry. That's her. I knew it from the day I met her. And so I could not afford to lose her. And that's when I made the pledge. I don't know how, I don't know where, but I'll fix it. I will, I'll get help somehow. I'll, I'll fix this. Okay. It was my wake up call that happened mm. because mm. I felt comfortable by showing my uncontrolled anger. It, it immediately started pushing her away from me. So our loved ones cannot be a lightning rod. We have to understand that even though they love us and even though they may put up with our negative behavior for a while, mm -hmm. but don't count on them staying forever because they're going to get tired of it. They're going to become scared, alarmed, fearful, and one out. And so there is, here's, here's what I'm getting to. We have to understand that even though they are our loved ones, there will be repercussions. There mm. will be an, a, a reaction to our actions. Just like you, you fear getting fired on your job because of a, a fit of anger, or at the mall, you're going to get the cops called on you, so you're going to behave yourself. We need to understand that when we are in our homes or around our loved ones, yeah, they may take it for a while, but there will be a repercussion. They will say, I can't do this no more. I think to a large degree, though, you are able to identify what are your triggers. Sure. And, and you made an effort to fix it. But more often than not, a lot of persons don't even know what their triggers are. And even when they do know, they're like, oh, but that's just how I am. You're just going to have to learn to live with it and deal with it. Yeah. So how, how, how can we then help persons to recognize that you have to be open to recognizing that you might have triggers that you need to fix so that you don't end up hurting mm -hmm. those who you really don't want to hurt. Yes. You, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I've even, I've been on both sides of the coin. I've been the angry person and I've also been in the, in the tornado of an angry person, mm -hmm. my family. Um, and so I had to, uh, finally, I had to draw the line because it became toxic. You know, in, in the book, Control the Beast, I write up a, a piece about nine levels of relationships and how to handle uh, toxic relationships. Well, when you're always throwing out negativity and anger to your loved ones, it but it becomes to toxic. And every time they come around you, they get poisoned, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. They get hurt. Uh, they walk away injured emotionally. And they, they just like can't take it no more. So the only thing you do with a toxin is you contain it and dispose of it. Now, the oh. relationship can be healed if you remove the poison and and nurture what's left and rebuild you you can do that it but it it takes work it takes a lot of work but the toxin ha, either the toxic person slash relationship has to be removed or removed for a while until you work through the process of extracting the poison from the relationship i know you said it takes work but in a world where everything is instant man you yeah, know, and, and you know, yeah. people hardly want to cook these days, you know, because you don't have the time. How many persons and how many people are really open to taking the time to make to to put in the work 
because there's a flip side for some people who say that if it is so much work, then it really isn't natural. And and it, it you know it's 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 not where I should be because it should be natural. I shouldn't have to be putting in all of this work. What's well, your response to something like that? Yeah, that's a great question, and I don't have solid data to give to you about how many people are willing to put in the work. I want to believe. I want to believe that a good portion would want to put into the work to salvage the relationship that is getting poisoned, especially that in a marriage uh, or your children, you know, your children are your kids, you know, and they're always going to love mom or they're always going to love dad, but they don't have to always be around mom or dad mm -hmm. because of the volatile environment that they are forced into. So, um, I, I really don't have a solid uh, answer with data backing it up of how many people's willing to pay the uh, put in the work. I do know that through the years when I was con contracted with probation and parole, uh, that I was court ordered a lot of people. <laughs> and if if I had a, a $20 bill for every time somebody said, I don't need this class, you know, the judge make I can build both of us a house and pay cash because nobody thinks they need to need to do this. But once they get into the into the class or the mastermind, they start realizing and seeing, okay, maybe I do have an issue here. So it really boils down to Miss Noreen as, as uh, a revelation. They need to get a revelation of what's going on and the trouble that they're responsible for. And, and that's, of course, that's another area that we talk about is is don't pl don't play games with the beast. In other mm. words, getting into the blame. You know, oh, if it wasn't for you saying that, or if it wasn't for you doing this, or if, you know, blame, 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 never taking responsibility for your own actions or for what you said. You know, we, I stress in the book, it, it's, we're not asking you to take responsibility for the whole situation. It's all my fault. No, it, it's not necessarily all your fault. You may have started it. You may have in, infuriated it or infused or uh, uh, inflamed it. But you may not be responsible for everything. But you do need to respond, be responsible for what you own. Hmm. Maybe you could have said something a little different, or or said it in a different way. You know, again, it's not what you say; it's how you say it that makes all the difference in the world. Uh, or there was an action done. Maybe I should have done this instead of that. Own that part because that's going to be a part of your healing process when you start owning what you've done so that you can learn how to correct, correct it. Uh, Ed Snyder here on Making It Last podcast. Well, let's get a word from our partners and we'll be right back. You loving me, I loving you. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life. You can't live your best life without a healthy immune system. Boost your immune system the delicious way with Zappi's organic juices and punches. Made from local produce with zero added sugar, our juices cleanse and revitalize your body as they boost your natural immunity. Try our delicious flavors. Beat it. Berry Bomb. Get Fresh. Ton Up. And Island Splash. Find us on Instagram at Zappies Organics or call or send a WhatsApp message at 1-876-779-8910 to order today. That's 1-876-779-8910. Zappies Organic Juices and Punches. Live your best life today. Does your business lack branding and having difficulty realizing your vision? Look no further. Splinth Brand Design Consultancy specializes in developing personal and business brands. Services include strategic management, website creation, social media branding, and more. Visit them online at www.wearesplint.com. Splint, the branch you need to succeed. Hi everyone, Delmas Brown here, national debating champion, 
2017, also a graduate of Northern Caribbean University, Governor General Awardee for Excellence 2018, and also international researcher, international debater, among other things. Now, the reason behind this video is to introduce you to the world's best communications coach who has made all of these kinds of accomplishments possible. Now, for four years, I had the opportunity or privilege rather to be coached by Noreen Daly, a communications speech specialist who has done a very phenomenal job at ensuring that I no longer use unnecessary filler vocabulary and who has also taught me the essence of communicating. Welcome back to Making It Last podcast with Miss Noreen. You know, one 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 of the things that that you said just now that I I am even gonna take away this conversation is the whole idea of owning. Yeah. Owning it. Because it's very, it's very easy that when you're having or when you set a disconnect with somebody to say to put the blame on the other person rather than stop to say, how then have I have I contributed to what is happening? So it's very easy to, very. to to do the blame game. Very, very easy, yeah. and it, and it takes a certain level of introspection sometimes to just step back from the situation and say, "Hmm, maybe it is that I have contributed to this to some extent, and you know how what then can I do differently not to escalate right what is happening?" So exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. you know. You, we've got to, there, there's, there's validity to the fact that we have to put in the work, you know, 42 years ago, when I made the pledge to, to my wife that I'm going to, I'm going to get help. Well, my first stop was my pastor. And I said, look, I need to talk. I got a problem. He goes like, what is it? I said, I am very angry and I don't know what to do about it. Well, now what I'm about to say, I'm not negating anything. Uh, I believe in the power of prayer, but he told me, son, go, go get some prayer in. You'll be fine. So I went and got some prayer in and three days later, I'm mad again. Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Got to have the faith that God's going to help us, but we also have to put in the work so that, we, you know, God help my mother, my mother always preached to me. And in fact, I teased and said, it's the book of Wanda chapter one, verse mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. God helps those who help themselves mm -hmm. and that's faith and works. So for us to fix this, for us to be better, I had to be willing to put in the work on my part. Now, another point, Ms. Noreen, when you were speaking just a moment ago that came to my mind is that when we try to fix these things, we own what we're responsible for. Be careful and not focus too much too much on the negative, focus on the positive. Okay. So in, in my rehabilitation with my, when my wife and I were just trial and error it and, you know, doing the best we can to get this fixed or get this managed. When I, when I lost it, quote unquote, we would sit down and have a conversation. And the first question is, what did I do? Right. Hmm. Where did I improve? So I cap, but we wanted to capitalize on the strengths and okay, now hmm. what could we have done better? Now Not we do approach. weaknesses, because if you, if you flip that and always focus on what you did wrong or your weaknesses, you're never going to get anywhere because you're focused on the negative side and not on the positive side or what you're doing better. That's what we've got to be reminded of. I'm growing. I'm improving. I did it right this time. Okay, I, I could have said this a little better, or I could have done this different. And so now, next time, we will intellectualize the situation, thinking of the past conversation, what I did right, what I need to improve, and I'm going to go after, subconsciously go after, I'm going to do this better. I'm going to handle mm -hmm. this better. So a little bit of nugget there. Yeah, yeah. As we're wrapping up, if it is that you could identify, say, a 
three-step approach in just terms of how to ensure that we don't end up hurting those who we really don't want to, what would that three-step approach be? Well, uh, in fact, uh, yeah, I've got about nine of them and I'll okay. bring them very quickly. So when we are feeling some things, we need to pay attention. This this little piece here is how to identify and diffuse negative mm -hmm. emotions within ourselves. And step number one is listen to your body, okay? When you start getting upset, biologically, things start happening. We hmm. start breathing, you know, shallow and fast, face feels flush, clen uh, fist clench, or our jaw clenches. Those are the early warning signs that a storm is getting ready to hit. So listen to your body. Is your heart starting to pound fast? You know, it feels like it's coming out of the chest, out of your chest. You know, what are those things? Stomach starting to churn? You know, each person's different yeah. on how they physically react to a threat mm -hmm. or to a negative emotions. Number two is think it through. You know, let's, let's face it. When we go into a, 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 an outburst, our mouth is in overdrive and mm. our brain is in park. We're not thinking, we're just reacting. We're running our mouth. So one of the things that we have to do is intellectualize the situation. Think it through. Think about what's going on. Think about who is involved. Why is this happening? Uh, but also, and, and extremely important, you have to realize there is a problem developing and it centers around you. You're the main player. You, you're up to bat. You know, you've got to, you got to sit there. Okay. Now, if I react this way, the outcome is going to be this. If I'm in an office situation and I start raising my voice and threatening and all of that, everybody around here is going to start looking negative at me. I'm going to push people away from me instead of bring them closer to me. So you just have to think it through for a moment. And and something else that, that we'll probably touch on maybe a little later is you don't have to deal with situations right then and there. That was my problem. I felt like when there was, mm -hmm. I got to deal with it right now. Let's get this resolved right now. Well, sometimes you just need to cool off. You just need to breathe a little bit and go think it through and then come back and deal with it. The, the, the lesson, how I learned that lesson is, you know, my wife and I, when we got married, we, we made a pledge to each other. We're not going to, we're never going to go to bed mad at each other. We're always going to make sure we're in good shape. One, it provides a better night's sleep and not being stressed about something. And two, God forbid, if one of us leaves this earth, the other is going to be left with a lot of regrets. Mm -hmm. And so we've made that pledge. She also told me, look, the way my personality is, if I get upset, just leave me alone. Let me breathe. Let me go think it, think about it. And then we'll come back and resolve it. We won't go to bed with unresolved conflict, but we may have to wait a little while. Well, I'm, I'm German. I got to do it right now. I got to fix it right now. And so for the first 10 years of our, of our marriage, we spent me chasing her around the house, sit down. We've got to fix this right now. You know, and finally I, it hit me. Okay. Leave her alone. We'll deal mm -hmm, with it later. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, when I let her go and let her go somewhere else, she come back about 15 minutes later. What's wrong with you? I said, nothing. Why? You're not chasing me around the house trying to resolve this. I said, well, I, I'm a slow learner. I got it. It's been 10 years. So anyway, we learned that lesson there. Number three, stop the flow. Okay. You know, um, when a wildfire is in full force, the wind is driving it. It's, it's out of control. Firefighters use a method of fighting fire with fire. Say so they find out what direction it's going and they run ahead a mile or so, and they do a control fire and burn everything in its path. Mm -hmm. When the wildfire arrives to where they've been, it distinguishes itself. It's the flow stops where they have been. So you need to get ahead of that wildfire and stop the flow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Burn it down, whatever it takes. Number four, help yourself. And we've talked a lot about this already is in, in any case, you need to find yourself in, especially when it's charged with negative emotions. Remember, 
you're the leading player. You're the, you're the star of that show and anything you can do to diffuse yourself uh, for someone else will be beneficial to the situation. Help yourself. Okay. Uh, because somebody is, is, and I call them Igmos, Miss Doreen. Igmos is ignorant. Oh. Igmos. You know, if you've got an Igmo that's running their mouth and, and saying all kinds of stuff, there's no law saying you have to respond to that. Just let them make a fool out of themselves, you know, and just stop. Listen to your body, think it through and help yourself by handling it the right way. Number five, take, take, again, we've talked about this, take your responsibility. Yeah. Again, you can't be responsible for everything that happens in a situation, but you do need to own what you do in the situation to make it better. Number six, never ever turn to violence. It resolves nothing. Violence does nothing. Okay. Uh, number seven, and, and this may be a bit, especially first starting a bit difficult is initiate reconciliation and restoration. In other words, be first to admit, okay, how could I've handled it better? I got to reestablish my healthy relationships and what would be the first step to make that happen. Okay. This initiating you initiating. Mm -hmm. Okay. What can we do to resolve this? Uh, how could we have handled this better? Or listen, I understand where you're coming from. I really do, you know, and I just kind of felt this, or I felt that initiate that restoration, mm -hmm. that reconciliation, because every important relationship is extremely uh, important to keep. Yeah. Uh, I tell a story in, in our, in our master class of it, it's, it's called nails and offense. And it's a story about a father who, um, who had a, a son that was dealing with, you know, anger. So he got a coffee can of nails and a hammer and put it on the back porch. They had a little picket fence around their backyard. And he said, I want you, every time you get upset, I want you to take a nail from the coffee can and the hammer and go put it in the, in the fence in the backyard. After a week, there was a bunch of nails down that fence. And the father went and got his son. And he said, now, tell me about each of these nails. What happened? What's the nail represent? And he went down the line telling the story and the situation. And they discussed it. How could you have done it better? You know, what? why did that happen? The whys, the what, the how, and all of that. Then he said, and now, son, go get the coffee can and the hammer. And I want you to pull the nails. Because he, he didn't drive them all the way in. He just drove them in just like maybe halfway. So he said, take all these nails out of the fence and put them back in the coffee can. When the boy finished that, he had one, the father had one more teaching lesson. He said, you see the holes in the fence. That's where the nail has been. You've got to remember, it's easier not to say something than to say something, mm -hmm. try to fix it. Because the nail went into the fence. That's the situation that you got involved in. You pulled it out. That's the the apology, and I'm sorry, but there's still a scar. There's still mm -hmm. damage done. So it's better not to say something. Keep it keep it in check, and you'll be okay. Number eight, of course, neuter, neutralize the, your environment. Whatever you can do, we've touched on that in the others. You know, bring mm -hmm. a calm. And then, of course, number nine. And again, we've talked about this. Get feedback. Get yeah. good, honest, honest heartfelt feedback on how to make it better. Thank you so much. You, 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 you said a lot, and I am sure my listeners and my viewers would have learned. And I'm sure what all of you said, there must at least be one or two that they can relate to. That I am sure of. Thank you so much for sharing that. My pleasure, Miss Noreen. Thank you for having me here on your podcast. And I am very honored that Hopefully I could be a blessing to your audience. Thank you. Make it last. There it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you for mm -hmm. joining us with Miss Noreen and making it last. We'll see you soon. This was making it last podcast. Where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, with other people. I'm doing daily until next time. Ooh, you loving me. I loving you. 
Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for 